I have to say one of the most, for me, painful and, and uh, it must have been painful to write about chapters was, uh, it's a, I believe in, it's called the, the Book of Morgan. And uh, it's, it tells the, son of your, uh, tells the story of your son, um, Morgan. Can you explain to the audience what his story is and how it changed your life in a lot of ways? Well, uh, Morgan, uh, when he was young, uh, um, was uh, very impulsive, really from the time he was three or four years old, and uh, um, was was hard to control. And uh, um, uh, one of his di early diagnoses was, was called. Uh, forget the technical term, but basically it's somebody who says no to everything. <laughs> so you could ask him whether he wanted ice cream, no. <laughs> so it didn't matter what you were offering him, uh, he didn't want to do it. Um, and, uh, and then uh, when he was, so he, so he had this difficult personality, which was hard uh, in nursery school, it already was showing up. And, uh, um, and then when he, when he started, uh, uh, K to twelve school, it was it was evident, and then of course it's when he was six, uh, um, my my late wife died of cancer, uh, and so that was you know I mean he didn't need anything to to set him off, but that made him even more extreme, and uh, um, and he would have his own uh, version, and he's a very articulate person. Uh, um, about what he experienced that that drove him to all of the impulsive actions that, that he took that later got him into trouble. But uh, eventually, um, he ended up in the criminal justice system uh, as a result of uh, some poor choices that he made. Uh, um, and as a result of his uh, psychological profile and personality, which uh, evidenced itself in an early age. And, and, and later on, I think part of the reasons that he did some of the things that he did was this impulsivity, uh, um, which some psychiatrists described to me as, you know, we all have the so-called uh, ego and the id, and one controls the other. I guess the ego is, is our impulsivity and the it uh, mod modifies it and moderates it so we don't just do whatever we want to do. Um, well, in Morgan's case, his brakes didn't work as well as, as other people's. Um, uh, anyway, uh, he got involved in the criminal justice system, and that was, of course, the first time in my life that, that, that I got up close and personal to it. And uh, as his father, uh, you know, I was his advocate and trying to do everything I can to help him through this these, this troubled period, uh, um, uh, and I did. Um, but uh, in the end, he, uh, um, as a lot of people do, I mean, he, he didn't deny his culpability for, for the crimes that he was charged with, and in the end, uh, uh, he accepted a sentence of five years. And um, five years parole, um, and sort of when I when I got through with his situation, as I reflected back on on the criminal justice system, I realized that this was a broken system that really was not uh, not providing the outcomes that it should, and. Uh, um, it was a misallocation of resources. Um, and uh, um, so I then sort of went on my own journey of trying to understand the macro picture, the systemic picture more, and realized that um, this was, uh, um, that this system was broken and actually Normally, the heads of bureaucracies 
protect their bureaucracy. But even all the leaders in the field that I spoke to, each one admitted that a system was broken and didn't know what to do about it. And that their own bureaucracies were culpable, but they didn't know how to control it. Um, and so I decided that, that, that uh, this was happening on my watch and I needed to engage and uh, that this was my call to, uh, this was, was the most important social justice issue of my, my time. And when I started in this six, seven years ago, people thought I was crazy. Uh, I didn't know what I was talking about. And no politician would get near criminal justice reform because any time they did, their, uh, um, their, their voting stats would collapse. Um, so they don't want to talk about it, they wouldn't pretend it didn't exist. And of course, a few years later, there's no politician who could run for office who doesn't talk about political uh, criminal justice reform because the world caught up with what, what I learned on, on my listening to her journey through the system. And we all realized that the U.S. has lost its way and was involved in mass incarceration including mass incarceration of many people who had mental health issues. And that this was, uh, uh, this was a system gone awry. Uh, 